Uh, Minister, others have outlined the numerous human rights violations, the violations of Article 18 rights and the expression of faith, the, the uh, forced evictions in East Jerusalem, uh, the constant expansion of illegal settlements, uh, the, the very gleeful expansion indeed of illegal uh, settlements that we've seen over recent years, uh, the provocation, the unacceptable killing of civilians on both sides, but far, far more in Gaza and the destruction of media infrastructure and health infrastructure. We know these issues, Minister, and we know also that you spoke strongly at the UN, as many others did, on the Security Council, but that a resolution was not passed. However, we have multiple previous resolutions of the Security Council. We have testimony. We know that there have been violations under war crimes in Geneva resolutions. We have a litany of proven and acknowledged violation of human rights. We're not in a point where we need to indicate that there might be a concern at that. We know it. It is a fact. So the debate now is, what do we do to show our seriousness in relation to those human rights violations? We should and of course have called for the ceasefire on Hamas and from the Israeli government. But what will we do about our human rights violation, our obligations? Our obligations, for example, under the International Court of Justice, which says that third party states should not recognise illegalities nor render aid or assistance uh, to, to, in, in, to them in maintaining them. Can we do more there, Minister? What are the proposals for how we do more to ensure we do not uh, give sanction indirectly, give permission and give a message of impunity in relation to these violations? Minister, I would ask you, on the Occupied Territories Bill, if you will not publish the advice of the Attorney General, will you explain in great detail to us exactly the obstacles? For example, does the AG advice reflect the Rosneft ruling which in 2020, we know, uh, has said, the European Court of Justice has said that public policy is a grounds for the imposition of sanctions. That was the case in relation to Russia and Crimea. It is the case now. Will you also publish detailed responses to the legal opinions we have put forward? It is not enough to simply say it may be illegal or not. If we are passionate about international law, Minister, I want to see you teasing it out in detail to us how you are trying to find solutions if there are constitutional concerns in relation to any part of the Occupied Territories Bill, publishing ideas about how we bring it forward, telling us what we're doing in customs to ensure no person in Ireland is indirectly put in a position of supporting illegal settlements and the inhumanity attached to them. How can we be fully confident? And at the EU level, Minister, you, I urge you, please ensure, because the message from von der Leyen was not strong, and I want to know that the Europe is that. And lastly, I would just say, Minister, persuasion is a great power Ireland has, but we also need to show leadership through action, and we have that capacity. Please follow Thank through. You. Thank you, sir.